for the airline industry, those questions and disruptions are nothing new. Drones have disrupted flights at airports on both sides of the Atlantic, and the incidents go back many years. For instance, in 2018, drone sightings over a 36-hour period forced hundreds of delays and cancellations at Gatwick Airport in, outside London. Just days before Christmas, more than 140,000 passengers were disrupted. Willie Walsh is the Director General of IATA, the group that represents the world's airlines. Willie's with me now. Good to see you, uh, Willie. We, we'll talk economics in just a second. Let's do drones. Uh, it, look, it, it's a serious problem for airports and for airlines. And once again, the airlines seem to be the victims of it all. Yes, uh, drones operating in the vicinity of an airport are dangerous. And uh, clearly, we don't want to see any risk associated with it. It's unfortunate that operations do have to stop until the drone can be uh, tracked or that uh, we have certainty that the drone is outside the operating environment of the aircraft. But yeah, it can uh, significantly increase risk on takeoff and the approach. So obviously, it's something that we have to take very seriously. On the question of the economics of the industry, uh, two milestones, more than a trillion dollars in rev and more than five billion passengers carried. Both are laudable and extraordinary, but I wonder, um, it's not, you're not making enough money on those numbers. No, and you said to yourself, Richard, you know, I, I don't think I need to remind you that uh, with net margins of 3.6%, these are way for thin compared to most industries. So it's great to see the industry heading in the right direction. We are expecting record revenues and record passengers. And demand remains strong despite all of the fears that people had expressed uh, for at least the last 12, if not 18 months. And we see strong demand continuing right through 2025. So I think the, the environment is generally positive And we remain you know, cautiously optimistic about the outlook. But I, I made some notes about sort of old favourites, for example. Um, old go goodies, but oldies. For example, are you seeing any better access to SAF, sustainable aviation fuel, such that it will make a meaningful difference rather than a totemic one? No, not, not at this stage. In fact, we're disappointed with the rate at which it's ramping up. Still optimistic for the longer term, but uh, what what is... Frustrating, I think, is that governments continue to provide significant subsidies for the production of fossil fuel and have not yet figured out what it is they want to do with sustainable fuel. And I should say, when we call it sustainable aviation fuel, it's a sustainable fuel that can be used for road transport, right. for the chemical industry. It's not just designed for the aviation industry. So it's important that you know this will help in the transition for all industries to net zero in 2050. Do do you see a difference in the years ahead between U.S. aviation and, say, European aviation, particularly bearing in mind arguably a lighter touch by the incoming Trump administration? Yes, there'll be investments in infrastructure, but consolidation is still on the cards on both sides of the Atlantic. Is it more likely now in the U.S. with a U.S. administration under Trump, do you think? Yes, I think so. I think the Trump administration is a positive for aviation. Certainly, if we can take anything from the uh, first time Trump was president, he was very supportive of the industry. And the comments about uh, removing unnecessary regulation, I think, is very welcome, particularly given what we've seen in the later stages of the current administration, where I think they were very heavy-handed in terms of additional regulation. I, I, your question is very important because we need Europe to change as well. And I, I think Europe is beginning to recognize the need to address its competitiveness on a global scale rather than its fixation, if you like, on competition within the single market in Europe. So I, I'm optimistic that 2025 will be a, a positive year for uh, you know, rowing back on some of the unnecessary regulations we've seen. Willie, let me wish you and the family very, very good season's greetings, sir. Thank you. Have a good year. We'll talk many times next year.